Hello and welcome from Just Another Poet, a Wales-based YouTube channel focused on poetry and poets. I'm Taz, I write a little bit of poetry and I love poetry. And I started this channel to celebrate the poetry scene here in Wales. So tonight we have Poet Asylum, which was conceived as a virtual gathering um, in these isolated times of social distancing. And in this edition, we have a lineup of a fantastic poets who have very kindly sent video footage of them reading their beautiful words. I hope that, like me, you will find the poetry soothing, healing and inspiring. I'd like to thank Jess Mukherjee, Marvin Thompson, Kitty Coles, Matt Haig, Taylor Edmonds, Eric Ngale Charles, Karen Izzard, Hamad Rind and Leila Begin Zafarova, who are featured in this edition. I'd also like to thank Literature Wales for their support. If you would like to be kept informed of some of the uh, wonderful poet interviews uh, that are coming up in this channel, as well as future editions of uh, Poet Asylum and poetry related content in general, uh, please do subscribe and uh, to show your appreciation for the poets, um, there is the comment section below, as well as details of uh, their websites and where to buy their publications, all in the description. Um, so, uh, please sit back and uh, relax and uh, enjoy the poetry. Hi, my name is Taylor Edmonds. Uh, I'm going to read a poem named My Mother Learned How to Swim. This poem is part of an ongoing project where I'm kind of looking at the lives of women and their collective experiences. So naturally quite a lot of um, abusive situations have come up, specifically domestic abuse. And when I write about these women and their lives, I really want it to be empowering and show how women can overcome these difficult situations and live on as survivors. So this is called My Mother Learned to Swim. When I ask my mother about my father, she holds her breath, counts to ten the way her doctor taught her. Your father was the sea, but I never learned to swim. I think he took her with him, swept into his undercurrent and left as an afterthought what remains, a sea star skeleton for a mother, brittle, empty. At night, she wakes me screaming, her limbs strangled in cotton sheets, nighty scrunched up around her hips, I climb in, pull her to my chest to rock and coo away the terror. She whispers into my skin, I am drowning. I am teaching my mother how to swim. We float on our backs, dolphins with chins tilted towards the sun. As her body touches the seabed, the water comes to life. Blue-green algae shoots and blooms, weaving around her ankles, her thighs. At the touch of her hand, salmon, suin and eel fruit and multiply, perform in shoals around her, get lost in the seaweed strands of her crown. I wish he could see her now, gliding into the light, my mermaid the trail she leaves. Thank you. So this next poem is called Welcome. Um, when I wrote this poem, I was going through a change of home in my life. Um, and I was kind of thinking about how we attach ourselves to the places that we consider home and when we move on from them and adapt to new places what do we leave behind in our memories or even physically if you left something physically behind and I wanted to kind of play with this in like a surrealist image of what this might look like. So it's called Welcome. We're unpacking our bodies from boxes in my parents' new rental home. 
Home is what we repeat to ourselves as we take our internal organs from the box labelled fragile. I pop my kidneys in the kitchen cupboard for later use. My mother wraps her intestines around the curtain rail. My father paints the walls magnolia, wearing gloves of his own blood. You would think we had done this before. A slice of a new moon comes out for us that first night, and I hear something under my bed. There's an old sick heart in a shoebox, half its tissue charcoal black, but still pumping, slow, ba-bum, ba-bum. I watch the disease spread, clogging arteries, valves and veins with tar thickness, fast until the beat is swallowed whole. Oculus. Knowing it's not real and diving anyway. This honeycomb's a pixel, still you're tasting it. Knowing your pain is illusion, a PVC raincoat. Knowing this reality is frosted windshield glass. The dead go on ahead of us, we'll catch them up the violet path. Our pieces will be swept to a god's creamy chest, a god who almond flaked itself, who snowed itself profusely. The crisp packet picking crow, the soft gas of rain, these are why you live. It's perverse, my love of petrichor. Think of all the simulated smells I might enjoy. Knowing that the ego needs obliterating. Knowing we stand at the prow of this ship, all diamond dust and captain. Hello, my name is Leila Begin. I would like to read two poems from the future rock opera called Imalatia. I will read them in Russian and then in English. Бродячий театр ночью в старой Праге. На старомерской дремлет фаэтон. В нем режиссер, артист, герои саги читают роль. А город видит сон. Все повторяет сцены давней драмы и падает признание первый снег под светом тая на губах стихами, как тишины звенящий саундтрек. И знают, впереди их ждет потеря, разлука затрубит свой верный рог. Но наш артист во встречу свято верит, и роль свою он не играть не мог. Хоть зрителями были только Бог, да осень, опустившая портьера. The strolling actors in the midnight prop. A phaeton is drowsing in the square. The central characters perform they act. The audience is sleeping, unaware. Rehearsals of the ancient drama scenes, the first confession, like an early snow, melts in the light, and the poetic dreams, like soundtracks, in silence grow. But soon the horns of farewell will blow, the heroes know what the future holds. Still loyal to the stage is actor's soul, True thespian, he wants to play his role. Alas, the only audience is God, and autumn with the drapes unfold. Проиграй на гитаре нежность, струны пальцами чутко ласкай, пусть под сердцем стихами режет. Пусть ответ на простонет строка, 
Ноготочий копель прольется в бесконечные луны тиши. В каждой точке проснется солнце, Каждый слог под пером задрожит. Проиграй на гитаре нежность, Пусть трепещет полночная мгла, Чтоб признание рифмы свежей С губ любимых сорвала я. Play the tenderness on the guitar. Stroke the strings to make them yearn. Or let my heart explode like a star. Or let the lyric moon return. Drops of ellipses will be flowing into bosom of endless abyss. Every line will wake up glowing. Every word will be sent a kiss. Play the tenderness on the guitar. Make the midnight shake in the light. Melt the freshness of verse and heart in the ecstasy of the night. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Marvin Thompson reading from my book and uh, that's called Road Trip and it's published by People Tree Press and you can also find the poem I'm going to read in the winter edition of Poetry Wales. Thank you. While searching for a Nancy with my mixed race children in the blind Bran community woodland. Part one, a fox lies still by a birch. Dad, is it dead? Arks Derris. Crouching down, I watch an ant crawl through its air fur. Inside my head are Mark Duggan's smile and last night's heavy dread. I dreamt his death again. A distant love once stroked my cheek and said they only shot him dead because he had a gun. I still see red and white carnations, a girl who now frequents her father's grave. Brown birch leaves descending a walk to school. 1985, mum's Palm bled sweat, Tottenham's ear strangely grey, stagnant. We passed my friend's burnt front door, flames had fed on parked cars. In tower blocks, rage had spread like an Arab spring, numbing unemployment. The oppressive use of sus laws. Is my friend dead? Mum answered with silence. Hunkered on mud, my prayer withers. The birch leaves hang slant and noonlight shrouds the fox. Sorry, it's dead. It's breathing, Dad, shouts Hayden. Listen, hard. Part two. Crouched by the fox's nose, I listen to placate my son. The fox is breathing. Should I leave it here to die? It's fur glistens with drizzle. Each breath makes my eyes moisten as though a gospel, a gospel singer's voice is rising from the fox's lungs. Derris blurts, Dad, listen, it needs a vet. In the dream, Mark Duggan lay on the Gold Coast shore, smoke rising above ancestors whose dark necks glistened, chains ready 
on docked ships from London. I woke, limbs tensed, ancestors rage jumping in my blood. The humid night laden with sailor screams, masts ablaze. Will Britain learn to love my children's melanin? With their voices, yellow bird, high up in banana tree. With their voices swelling, I carry the limp fox. The grey mountains are watching us, a buzzards circling. I scratch and scratch my wrists. The vet stiffens, holding her stethoscope. The fox's eyes listen. Hello, I'm Kitty Coles and I'm going to read two poems from my little book, Visiting Hours. And they're both called Visiting Hours. And this one is Visiting Hours 1. He tells me that the food here is very pale, that they eat it in a hall like an airport lounge. I imagine peeled lychees drying in sterile air. I don't suppose they run to lychees here. He tells me the stereo we bought on Monday is waiting in an office for inspection before it's granted permission to enter his room. The curtains quaver like flames at his open window. He tells me about the woman who once stopped screeching, about her eyes that open up like wounds. He tells me, pointing to the pebbled courtyard, about the man who yesterday stood out there for hours, arranging the white stones into a circle. The staff prevented him from completing it. The broken circle stands like a monument. And this is visiting hours too. There are always people tramping the corridors here. They look me up and down. I'm intruding here. I put out my arms to touch the air near your body. I can't yet trust myself to touch your body. You package yourself in layers to hide your shrinking. I have felt at a butterfly kiss your instinctive shrinking. It always seems to be dusk here, always cold. From under your layers, new hair, you emanate cold. Your silence seems to demand I respond with silence. I wish to imply the crudeness of words by my silence. We walk the grounds and keep silent. Your hem collects mud. Your hair in its beauty burns. I turn to the mud. Why do we keep so neatly to the paths? I would run if you led through damp grass. Disregard the paths. We return to the door. We pause to wipe our shoes. If I could walk a mile in your shoes. Thank you. Hello Taz, <laughs> hope you're well. Uh, thank you very much for this. Um, I'm going to do uh, six short pieces for you. Um, the first three I wrote an open field, avant-garde style. And the first three are Fragments, Grey Book, and which Fragments is about memory of home, or what used to be home. Grey Book is what it is, and the which is a dream sequence. So here we go. Um, fragments. Ongo mo kalamongo mo wagbe ya wea akere moto rainde ne peli Ongo mo kalamongo mo wagbe ya wea akere moto rainde ne peli weli mo e me onya mo e me e me e me rainde ne peli Summer's negative horizon pestering. Dead trees not lasting, still leaves betraying their roots. Hurricanes and blurred visions like birds flying zigzag, 
then landing on your narrow pitch, one can monitor the winds from here. Step by step, they march, singing nursery rhymes, flags and effigies they erected, swinging in the direction of the winds. These are not the streets I used to know. Animals washed their bodies in fermented seeds, leftovers, men dancing with empty bottles of liquor, a lone bee buzzes, sucking nectar from nearby hibiscus, haggard its breeding, dying with every stride. It falls. Red lightning strikes, September rain pours, the king's whip rips. You see, these are not the streets I used to know. Brown, dark hairline, preachers come and go, marches of gaiety, lamentations from a piper's whistle. In the village of Omofia, Okonko fought a good fight. These winds brought quarrels, a curse amongst us hybrids. These are not the streets of my youth. Grey book. <clears throat> Did the muscles of a virgin refugee construct you? My mind wondering what treasures hidden within your spine. Behind these fine lines, should I pick you up and peruse? My eyes seeing an emerald island with sea breeze, heart beating faster with every page turned, wondering what lays ahead. The shyness of our smiles bewitches me. An umbrella-like shadow it cast upon my soul. And no, 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 I did not dream of her, my heroine. I watched her coming and fast forward through these pages, my eyes trembling every time she came. The melody of her voice. With her on a horseback, we ran through stalactites, picking shells on stalagmite. We danced along the shorelines of a small province, using mangrove trees for firewood, cooking red crabs. They too were in season. Euphoria through these pages. I see you charmed by the depths of your dimples when you smile. Through the pages of this grey book, we are swimming, a common quest. I wait, reading between these lines, slowly, slowly, slowly. A witch. He wiped his sweat with two fingers. He crossed the road, hopping. He saw epitaphs of various departed souls humming. He hummed love songs in darkness. Lost in thought, he met an old woman holding a cat, a palm reader. He remembered her words. Behind this graveyard of falling dreams, a beautiful city awaits you. In that city, there are birds of roses. There are starlings in the skies just before dusk. Blackberries reach into the roads, begging to be plucked from their stalks. Blue and yellow lilies, as eyes can see, on the roof of the house in the middle where three paths cross. Princess Fazana awaits you. Come closer, come closer, for the witch was blind. Go yonder, my son, she said. Follow the path at its gate. Shout, Fazana, Fazana, Fazana. The circle of this tragedy will end. He wiped his sweat with one finger. The witch handed him a letter. It said, I will wait for the lights to go before I forget you. It is hard for you, even harder for me. There is nothing we can do but cry peacefully. I will bow and listen to the music these winds bring. There is poison under my tongue. Maybe, just maybe, I am only 24 hours away from you. Like the rain on his window pane, with its monotonous beat, she was gone. So three points for Camry, my new abode. <laughs> uh, I'm no longer crossing seas, climbing mountains, seeking peace and finding none. I have a new home in Wales. So this is three short points for um, <laughs> Camry.
Mumble's pub crawl. Damp sea sat outside the pub. It stared at the girl that watched. Its waves were thick of her. Only the moon was important. That beam of light he slid down. Everyone was drunk. She was too. Something else in her eyes would run if there was trouble. They walked, one shadow, one moon, muttering on the headland, suggestions of tidal waves and surges. Only the young are that urgent, he said. It was before she was a woman, before she was kissed, living like a sharp smack of fist, pretending to be a girl, pretending to be a boy. The lights jazz handing them from the chemical plant across the bay. A black blue moon sat on the swings, mad with the air, and he told her things, beautiful as a soap bubble. Something dressed as fiction slunk home in his sea drift of lime and vodka. The swing untangled, kept waving, smiling. The Angel. He wears a strong coat of wood pulp and bark. A veneer, polished, shines when waxed. When bathed and clean, in a certain light he shines, like a pigeon or a magpie glimmer. He wears a long coat to hide behind. He won't show his broken wings, his wounds like panic and hell fight, a gripped tight over broken bodies at night. He mutters and mumbles in his sleep, so low I can barely hear. He says prayers for the poor, the cracked and littered under floorboards, spiders, the smell of mud and police stations, for those lost behind doors. Perhaps I passed him on the streets once, perhaps he thought it was me screaming like a cat in darkness, but we both know it was him, alone, made of the devil, holding on to a lifeboat made of his body, covered in feathers. Brevity or fragility of life is the most common theme of the religious dictums or the poetic verses carved on these epitaphs. For some life is but a span, for some a dream, a bubble or a cookie. Hasti apni hubab kisi hai. A bubble is our life. In jahan khab ast khab. This world is a dream. Pani ka bulbula. A bubble of water. In God har chi has dar alam neest. As if whatever in this world exists doesn't exist. Uh, life beyond life also seemed quite popular. Mein süßes Lied, wenn du im Grab. I was wandering like an aimless soul, thinking about the possibility of post-mortal romances when I heard some voices in the distance. I know the sceptic readers of the age of microwave and automobile would have a trouble believing in the presence of the others. Spirits, kind or evil, remnants from the past or visitors from the future. Aliens from unidentified flying saucers or yeti monks from Tibetan heights. Blue jeans of the desert or the wish-fulfilling genie of the lamp. Welsh pukas or wailing banshees of the Celts. Ghouls or thieves with gigantic proportions. Churels with their feet turned backwards. One-legged Athenian ambusas or three-legged Zoroastrian zebras. Imps or chalavas that would jump on your shoulders from the trees. Trees that read blood. Men with horns, tails and hoofs. Shape-shifting 
hobgoblins or protein bald anders, loony werewolves or hirsute garou, weasels who turn into badgers, or cobras who turn into sultry actresses after having lived for hundreds of hundreds of years, occitan horses that kidnap urchins, hagi crabs containing the gouty spirits of slain samurai, fallen angels dead rising from their graves, dancing skeletons, voices in your head, and the fool's promises. Hello, I'm Karen Izod. Here are two of my poems. The first one is called Slipstream. That place we go to, you know, there's a river. Shall we go to the river? Am I part of this we, I wonder? Is it my hand you are holding? There's a bridge and a cafe too. My mind travels upstream, Hampton, Chertsey, Runnymede, yes, Frenches, where we took the boat to Windsor, the town crowned with laurels, Olympians taking a break, shipping their oars. The pubs were full and we couldn't get a seat, though a mother and child shifted up and you told them about your dad, who got up at five to catch the tide, hauling his barges up to Greenwich. It's Alton, she says, and I struggle to think of a river, though a quick Google tells me it's the source of the way. So we go and hold on tight against a wind that slaps through the empty parade. We eat a pizza in Zizi's and to all the charity shops. Thank you for a lovely day, she says, and I thank her too. It was eaten, I say, driving home, making a connection. I think you are remembering Eaton. And this one, um, written in Blakeney Key last summer, is called At a Stretch. It's a different call across the freshers. I'm waiting for the curlew, but now the crackle from the loudspeaker beckons like a piper to the child. Regatta week, and my usual wintering stopover is a three-deep throng all along the quayside, and more backed up the length of the pub wall. Beer swills from what looks like single use, which we are assured will be gathered up, washed and set off again in this great spirit of summer days, stretching like the neck of a heron to peer at futures that collapse the hottest and the wettest into a few small hours, while children and some valiant men teeter out on the greasy pole, clinging with bravado and cheers over the grey mud of the channel, knowing there is only one way this will end, but trying again and again. Thank you. This is a poem called Four. Four years earlier, my father, in a Sando Genji and blue checked lungi, pulls out a volume from his 4,000 volume study. Phone rings. We speak for a minute. I imagine Baba tying, untying the elaborate knot of his lungi like his father did for no apparent reason. Like men of their age would across wires, across oceans, inside tall gleaming apartments with lone verandas running half the length of circumference, trampling over the ashes of centuries old thin bricks, high, high ceilings with cracks in the corners, meandering uiboka, feasting on the peeled off plaster, choking on vapid ceiling fans. My father would curse the moth, eating through the lines he wrote, taking big chunks each time, like mighty Borigonga, smiting upon earthen banks crumbling into floodplains. A cactus flower bloomed, facing Sir Road, each leap year. 
One year it bloomed into a knot. Four years in, today he is across a knotted horizon and I, for my life, cannot work out who I and his lungi.